It's another devoted to a soldier resource panel. This is part two because I love these gentlemen so much. I thought I'd and we love you too. <laughs> bring that back on and torture them some more. I see Russell is out there. Russell is saying, Andrew, he cannot wait to meet you. I can't wait to uh, meet you too, Russell. And I threw my pen somewhere because I was fidgeting. So gosh, now I have to remember all my questions that come up when you guys are talking usually so I don't forget. I'll write down the questions because my mind, you know, dang it, I lost my pen. So let's get <laughs> right into it. So I might just interrupt you or there'll be complete silence on my end. I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be chaos today. Complete chaos. Um, hey, chaos <laughs> is good sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes. So Oi. we were, uh, I don't even remember where we left off yesterday, but I do remember what I want to talk about today. Because again, I write these things down. Oh, Andrew's dog's throwing a. Sorry. That's Major okay. was being a pain in the butt. What is his name? His name's Major. Um, he was my first dog I got when I was in Tennessee. And he's a Border Collie, but he is, um, he's my, he's Katrina's dog. He used to be my therapy dog, and then he decided to like my wife better than me. He said, abort yeah. mission, abort. abort. Abort, yeah, I know. I'm now he, to side. he hates me. I brought another dog into the fold, and he hates me. Oh, yeah, you're dead to, You're dead now. Yep, yep. That, that is definitely um, how, how it goes. So Justin's on here, Justin Richards, Army. I'm not going to say it right. Is it 0307? How do I say that, Brian? I don't know. That's Army. Yeah, I'm Marine. We don't know what oh, that Air means. Force. Are you both Marine? Why did no, I miss that? Force. Air Force. No, right? no, no. Dude, he's okay. dude, he's uh, he's Air Force. <laughs> I, I'm all confused about He's a he's a chair force. Yes, yes, yes. We, <laughs> I gotta we, look at my notes. <laughs> just kidding, Brian. I love you. I know it's all good. I love the jokes. Sorry. Did you feed the Marine? Okay. Sorry. Yeah. She says hi. She's feeding the dogs right now. Okay. But okay, so I want to get just jump right in about this collective, like, I have this mindset of collectively working together. And we kind of touched on that before, that many nonprofits that are out there, or veteran organizations that are out there, will not even touch you, or like kind of coexist, or I don't know, cross borders with another veteran organization or a nonprofit. I mean, I've had him even tell me like, no, I'm, I don't even want to talk to you. And I'm like, yeah, I just want to, I just want to help. Um, so I find that that is a huge issue, no matter, I mean, no matter what industry you're in, no matter what service you're doing, you're no longer serving. In my opinion, this is my personal opinion, you, whoo, you are no longer serving the purpose that you started for, you are now serving yourself for like a business or your own profit or your own ego or trying to, you know, make you make your name larger than what your mission originally was. So that was a lot of me blurping out my frustration with that. What do you think can be done, if anything can be done to kind of break that down or like, what do you do about that? I feel like it's a misuse of veterans. That's what I feel. Andrew, I'll let uh, you go first on this one. Brian, go ahead. <laughs> no, you go ahead, Andrew. Uh, I actually, you have, you have 10 years over me in the VFW. You probably dealt with this question a lot more than I have. So go ahead. I mean, you look at, look at Andrew and I, we're great friends. He represents, um, one organization, I represent another. We always, it's like I said in the last interview, mm -hmm. the VFW being a 121 year old organization, Ooh. we have our hands in certain pots, but I've had people come to me before and tell me, well, we're not going to support the Gary Sinise Foundation because we're in competition with them. No, we're not. We don't spill smart homes. Um, I tell every veteran, it doesn't matter what organ, what veteran organization you belong to. You should at least belong to one. Um, I can belong to two. Andrew can belong. I can belong to the American Legion of VFW. Andrew can belong to the the American Legion of VFW and, and Purple Heart. 
And Marine Corps League. And Marine Corps League. I always forget about that one, and I'm sorry. Yeah, um, it's small. I know. It's, 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 we're getting bigger, though. It's a great organization, though. Um, it is. What I tell people is what the value is, and like with your with your bigger veteran organizations, your VFW, American Legion, Military of the Purple Heart, um, um, DAV, Disabled Veterans of America, we are chartered by Congress. So our organization, like our commander, Doc Schmidt, he gets to sit down. It's either once or twice. I'll throw both times out, both out there with the president to talk directly about veterans needs. He gets to testify multiple times. I think last year we testified 17 times in front of Congress. Oh, man. You know, so belonging to the VFW or the American Legion or Military Purple Heart, those organizations give you a voice on Capitol Hill. And power comes in numbers. We all know that. So the more veterans that belong, the stronger our voice is when we send our reps to DC right. to do to, to do their job. Yeah. Yeah. Alex broke put put in, it was a, just a good comment. It shouldn't matter if the true goal is to benefit veterans, each one is done in a different capacity, kind of exactly what you're saying. But what can we do? I get that. And I agree with you. I love that you just just get involved with one, you know, whatever one fits you. But how sometimes the negative has a louder voice or people want to focus on that than the positive, right? So people want to focus on, and then they just throw their hands up because they've had a bad experience or like one nonprofit or one organization will be like, well, no, I'm not, you can't be involved because you're involved here or something. So how do we combat that? Because or do we not combat it? But I feel it's such a disservice. Like you're right, there is no competition. Everybody's so different and, and we're gonna have different needs, but how do we combat this? Do you care, Andrew? Um, well, um, I've been a part of uh, the VFW for um, uh, probably about three years. And I've had some good posts, I've had some bad posts, but I don't give up on the VFW. Um, you know, American Legion is great. Uh, Marine Corps League um, is great. I mean, I've been part of one post and I love it. But the VFW, I mean, a lot of people think that we're competing against each other. We're not. We're all trying to do the same thing. Um, it's just, it's, it all comes back to ego. And ego's got to be smashed. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, I was speaking like the Hulk. But we have to smash the ego um, and get over ourselves. Okay, we're... We aren't that important. We really aren't. But as a whole, we are. Right. Um, you know, Brian, does that sound okay? I mean, no, I mean, that's perfect. We, I know just from my 10 years in the VFW, I've had people come to me and transfer to our post, and, and their excuses have been, well, I go to so and so and I sit at the bar and I'm, I was treated like crap. Or, yep. you know, they've always got something where they, and so what I tell people is if you're going to join, especially if we sign somebody up who's not from this area, like if they're like, you know, I want to join, but I'm not. My thing is, is go at large. And then I tell them, go visit the different posts in your area and interview them. Sit down with those commanders, talk with them, go visit the post on just a regular Friday night, go see what they're about. Mm. And go to the, join the one you feel ready, you feel most comfortable with. Right, right. I, I like it's it's kind of like we can't we have to switch our mindset of it's not the organization is just it is a whole. People make it up, right? And everybody yep. has free will, so they're going to act in different ways. So just because you might get a dick on one, you might get somebody cool on the other. If you get a door slammed in your face on one, you might get one with opened arms, you know, and one might not be family oriented and one might. So it's, I guess it's that same philosophy that we really have to have a bigger voice of saying, just because one doesn't fit doesn't mean that's, that's the only thing out there in the world. No, that's a good, that is a very, very, very good point. And if you choose 
to not do that, then it's, it is, it's your ego and it's your excuse to be lazy and complacent and stay in your own crap. Hey, she said it complacent. I knew it. <laughs> well, it's, it's our 12 steps. It's in my, 12 steps, the 12 out of steps. My mind. <laughs> now, here's something and we'll find out if I get in trouble after this for releasing part of this information. But look at the VFW. Most people don't know that in the VFW, and I think it's at all levels, and I'm just speaking straight from my heart. We don't get the information out about what we do, what our core is, and our core is helping veterans. Or I guess our mission is helping veterans. Mm -hmm. Our core, because of our charter with Congress, is community. So, like, we just released our, our, our scholarship programs, and I'll comment after this and give you the links for the scholarships. But we give $3 million a year away in scholarships. We just this past, what was that? I was in Kansas City at the headquarters back in October. In October, we just found out we broke the $9 billion mark and recovered aid for veterans for their disability. Damn. That's huge. People don't know that. The other yeah. thing people don't know. I didn't know that. The other thing people don't know is your claims. You know, when they file claims with with wounded warrior those come back to the vfw and wounded warrior pays the vfw to fought to do those claims yeah i knew you knew that andrew yeah, yeah I mean, no i remember you telling me that vfw in my own personal opinion does not do enough to get that out there we don't brand ourselves enough and that's one of the things that i've already talked with my department quartermaster about and like, branding is my thing. That's what I want us to work on. We need to rebrand ourselves as an organization. Yeah. Um, when, when I travel, one of the things I do is ask people, do you know about the VFW? What do you know about the VFW? And most people will say, oh, it's the bar over on this part of town or it's the bar on this part of town. Or, you know, they have a good wing night or they have a good karaoke or, but they can't tell you what we do. Yep. Yeah, no, no. I've learned so much just from our conversation before and this conversation. So I have to go over three things. Justin said um, veterans have ego problems. Ha, 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 question mark. <laughs> uh, yes, we do. Andrew, this one is for you. This right, is sure. one, um, so are you wearing pants? Alex wants to know if you're wearing pants. Yeah, I am. I'm wearing pants, yes. So hurrah for us today. He has pants on for us. And then this is actually <laughs> serious. So Russell is um, a Vietnam era veteran. He lives out in Seattle, Washington. And he right. said he can't join the VFW. Russell, I always forget. Um, he'll, t he'll inform me of it. But it's where they cleaned up the body from the, those mass killings. I think it was in Africa or South Africa. Um, Way back, whatever he'll he'll tell me. Oh, I can't believe I for, I just went brain dead with it. But he was the wrong veteran. He's been considered the wrong veteran his whole like his whole entire life because he either wrong was veteran. There's no yeah. such thing so wrong veteran. He was when he there's was, no there's no there's there there isn't a wrong veteran ever. Well, right, but when he goes to the VA and things like that, he was the wrong veteran. So so can you uh, without him? That's all I know. But that's what he wrote, and I wanted to speak on that. I can't join VFW. I was deployed, but again, wrong kind. I think because back in the day, he either went to jail or he joined. And yeah, chose, I had some friends who did that. Yeah, <laughs> he chose joining. Um, and then he went to, damn, I'm so mad that I can't remember that. Like, it was a big deal. It was a cult, and he brought all of, like, hundreds and hundreds of people. <sighs> Waco? No, this was, the like, cult, he's, so. he's Vietnam era. Okay, um, okay. Dang it. And they all had to drink something. They didn't drink them. They, he shot them. And it was, and then we came over, and we had to clean up all the mess oh son of a biscuit eater anyways i guess that maybe doesn't matter but no you... I'm, I'm interested yeah i'm definitely intrigued okay now. russell please fill me in here it's russell tell up. us please where were you deployed <laughs> um so um anyways what do you say to that how do you respond to i can't join vfw i was deployed but again wrong kind um so, oh brian go ahead you, you. Yeah, so, I mean, 
our membership is based off of what our our congressional charter. The same with the American Legion. So he can still, he may not qualify for, someone may not qualify for membership, but they can still be part of the organization. They can still come to events. They can still help. We can still help them. We are not limited to just helping veterans that deployed for a foreign war. Right. We can help any veteran across the board, member, no member, it doesn't matter. Um, so we're still here. The only difference that it makes if he's a member or not is when it comes to voting for post election. Voting. That's all it is. It's voting. I mean, he can still be involved. Um, and I would encourage him to. And if he if if voting is that important to him, then definitely talk to the American Legion. I mean, yeah. you know, anyone. Jonestown. Sorry, I have to interrupt. Alex, you're right. It was Jonestown. 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 In Africa? Jonestown. I, like, I could have made up the Africa part. Like Johannesburg? I mean, that's the only... Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Johannesburg. Alex, Alex will give us some history education <laughs> on it. Well, it's, um, I remember it because he would told me about it. He's in the documentary, and he talked about the what he saw and what he had to go through and what it was like. So that's kind of where I come in and my knowledge about it is his personal experience and right. and things like that. Where they oh drank cyanide. Drink cyanide. Yeah. It was that's nasty. above my pay grade before yeah. my time. I'm just a, a boot camper compared to that. <laughs> I, I didn't learn about that in, in the history books in uh, social studies. I don't know about that. Well, Russell can tell you all about it. He's an open book. If you, well, if you, if you hey, hey, there's a hike out in uh, Seattle. The River Warrior Seattle hike is coming up uh, in a couple months. So I might have to go out there and see Russell. Yep, yep. Yep, he's gonna. He's he's. I already talked to him, forcing him to do it. But back good. on top. Yeah, he's got it. He, he's good. So, um, so back on it. So he can't be in in a member now. Is that kind of um? Does does that matter to you as a veteran? I guess being a member, or no. not like I'm saying. Like, okay, this is where your ego gets involved, right? Does it matter to have that membership? title or not. Uh, that, that's an ego thing, but there's very I'm thinking of my post alone. I can't think of anybody who's extremely active in our post that would give somebody a hard time over that. Um it all depends on the post and the makeup of the post and the culture uh, you know that that they're around. I believe that plays a big key in, in negative attitudes. Um, yeah. You know, we have people, we have a, a veteran that lives next door to my VFW post um, in some condos. He'll stop by. We were sitting outside the other day and me and another member um, just going by checking on stuff. And he just pulled up and he walked like halfway or three quarters of the way down the sidewalk out front and started talking to us. And he didn't qualify for the VFW, but He'll still, I mean, he's come multiple times, just come over and hung out, talk with us. Yeah. I mean, he's involved. So it must, yeah. it's, I think it's a personal ego thing because Russell does like um, go there and I know he has breakfast there on Sundays with the community and stuff like that with our friends out there. But so I guess maybe that's another excuse. I don't qualify to be a member. So I mean, I can, I can tell you right now, I mean, if he walked up to us and the first thing out of his mouth or if you, when we found out, you know, about the sign, like everybody, it would be like children's story time. I mean, we give him a little chair, sit up front and we'd all sit Indian style to hear his stories because yeah. yeah, it's, it's awesome. You could, someone put a link in it and Alex said it was Jim Jones was a leader. It was 1978. I believe they killed a senator too. Yes, Alex. That's like all like coming back. 78? I was like two. 1978. <laughs> I wasn't even born yet, but <laughs> yeah, you weren't born yet. <laughs> um, just kidding, just kidding, Ryan. I mean, and but that all goes back because there are there are guys that went to like the Korean Service Medal. They backdated that, so there may yep. be something backdated that he doesn't know about that could qualify him. But yeah, what's important here? It's just being involved. It hasn't, I mean, if you can be a member, be a member, but being involved, having that community, 
um, that brotherhood, mm-hmm. that's what matters. The camaraderie is what's important. Yeah. And even if you can't join the VFW, you can one be, be uh, part of the auxiliary. Mm-hmm. Um, you can, you know, still be part of the American Legion. If you didn't go overseas, because uh, usually VFW is for, for combat overseas, uh, depending on, you know, what conflict you were in. But, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's like what Brian said, we're all in this together, right? you know, and we're not, we're not biased against, you know, you can't, you can't get the VFW. You don't belong here. But yeah, you do belong here. You're a veteran. You belong right. here. Right. So I think the moral of this, because that time went by super, super fast, is that. It's too, too short. Jesus, I we know. don't get anywhere. I know. Um, but I might have to go on. Let me look at these because I have a couple of the questions that I want to get to um, get through. Here's one that I think is. Um, OK, so how as your advice, you went through whatever you went through, whatever experience. I know, Brian, you had a friend that, you know, introduced you to the VFW and that's how how you joined. How would you. For people that are still active, because I know there are a lot of people that are, listen, that are still active and mothers that have sons that are still active and, you know, whatever. What can you say to people that are still active to kind of maybe prepare their mindset or open their mind that you're going to want this? This is like awesome. Is there anything, or is it one of those things you just gotta figure out? So, are there two dogs, Andrew? Are they happy? I'm sorry, my dogs are going. Uh, I think they're going out for a walk right now, and they always do this. Sorry. Um. Well, I mean, what we like to. Well, I mean, I don't, Brian, correct me if I uh, if I'm wrong, but a message to the guys that are serving, the guys and girls that are serving now. Um, the VFW is our tribe after you get out you come into the vfw or american legion or dav or iava or uh, marine corps league i mean it's it's another it's like a it's kind of a transition for us from taking orders okay we're around our brothers now and we're in a relaxed environment and that's what it's supposed to be and that's Mm -hmm. what it was for me like after i got out i i took a little time off i was well you know i was drinking a lot but then I found the VFW and the Marine Corps League and the American Legion. And now I'm a part of all three. And it's it's amazing. I love it. Yeah. You know what I what I heard from that is like when I listen to my son, I can hear my son. He's like when he got out and he was working, he would be like, I would talk to people. He would talk to people like he would talk to his Marine or his other Marines. And they would look at him like, you, what the heck is coming out of your mouth? Like you crude <laughs> son of a gun kind of kind of thing. And he learned very fast and it was very hard, but he want, he's, that's still in his blood. So it's almost like there, you. this is a place that you can, people are going to understand that communication style. You yeah. don't have to soften it. And yeah, you, know, you, can, you can be yourself. Yeah. You, you yeah. can swear. You can... Whatever. Go ahead. Sorry, Brian. I interrupted you. I would explain it in two ways. One, that camaraderie that people understand because, I mean, I, I'm guessing for every after every conflict, major conflict, but, I mean, our, our sense of humor is dark. <laughs> and it's screwed up. I mean, there's no hiding it. No. Nope. Um, Talk to Donnie O'Malley, Vet TV. That's yeah, dark I'm, humor. It's I kind of like it. I don't know what that says about me, but maybe that's why I do what I do. What I I would throw on top of that is, and especially if I was talking a young, young airman, sailor, marine, um, uh, soldier coming out of the service, they're not the VFW is not what's on their mind. The American Legion is not what's on their mind. But if they're like. So just bringing them in and trying to get them involved at some level, but they're still more than likely going to get married and have kids, start a family, work. Like they've got a life to build. Um, But we like to stay in the background and just say, hey, we're here for you. Hey, we're here for you. Hey, we're here for you. Because what's important is 
when they decide to go to school, there's a GI Bill. If they want to transfer those benefits to their spouse or to their kids, you know, we're the ones that the ones that came before us are the ones that fought for that. And that's what gave them those rights. So what's what we have to look at is not only the camaraderie part, but the part that's going to seal your future and protect your future benefits that you earned. Mm. And there's a, a lot of people that just they don't see that. They don't see the value in that. And my fear, especially, and again, don't know if I'm get myself in trouble for saying this, but we've just, the country has just wrote checks out to every American adult. And when this is over, they are going to look for ways to recoup that money. Their area pe- programs are going to be cut. So the Metropolitan Museum can have $27 million, sorry. You know, but they'll try to cut something from veterans. I and like the men. Easy, we, easy on the men, Brian. Huh? Nothing. Was, never mind. Oh, if you know the correct one. I like hey, I like going to the music. I like going to the I men. It's, it's, or the MFA or something like that. But I don't know. Well, you're right. <laughs> but, you know, what's important is, is securing those benefits because I have a son in the other room right now that's five. If he decides to join the military one day, it's my job one to make sure my benefits are there for me as I get older, but two, his generation, you know, or like Andrew and I, it's been eight, 19 years since 19 years. On 19 years since this war started. So there are kids that were born when their dads came home from a deployment that are now spilling blood on the same sand. Yeah. That yep. when people's that's as powerful. So securing those benefits is what's important. Mm. And you're there to that's um, that's important. They don't think of it. And I think actually I'm thinking because as I'm here, I'm stuttering because my mind is going. I think we have to put a little responsibility as like the if you have parents or family of a loved one, we have to be the ones to kind of push that and keep that in the forefront because they won't, you know, like my son, he, he's, he didn't think of that stuff. He was just, he was like, he was just in a, in a you know, his own little world over there. Um, but having that community. So I think even, even marketing, I want to say this to the mothers out there. Like we have yep. so many mother groups. I am still friends. I'm actually going to be doing um, one of these with my Marine moms that yep. I'm so psyched about because no one ever thinks about the mom or, or, and I've had a lot of Marines say, I never, I always wonder what my mom was going through. I always wondered what my mother thought, you know? So anyways, that's a whole side note, but we need to educate them so that they can, we can educate our children. Mm-hmm. I'll get you. So the VFW is a fact sheet on what we've done and mm-hmm. the dollar amounts and numbers. And I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. But I mean, we have had, we've had parents when their kids come home from a deployment, the parents will buy a life membership for that child um, or that soldier or that Marina hate to call them a child. I mean, that's, what, that's what we're there for. We just found little out boot, today. Little boot camper. We've yeah. got the, uh, uh, Alabama graduate coming home today um, who is enlisting into the army as a lieutenant and we're doing him his swear, swearing, swearing in ceremony at our VFW post this Friday. Ooh, yeah. So look for us, Andrew. I'll be on Facebook Live for that one. Nice. No, no I will. I'll, I'll tune in for that. Ah, So yeah, if you can post as much as you can in these links, because I know I'm sharing it in my mom groups and they're like, I never knew that, you know, so this, this stuff is, is, is so, so, so beneficial to um, everybody. So I thank you for like the ones that you did before. Is there anything before we depart for another, I find it valuable. I mean, I learn every time I have these conversations, so thank you. But is there any last parting words to everybody? Um, um, any saved rounds for you, uh, Brian? Any what? Any saved rounds? I mean, I would just tell everybody be safe and, and take care. And, you know, if you're a veteran, support your local veteran organization, whichever one it is. I, I agree with that. And, uh, oh, 
in two weeks, May 16th, the River Warriors Charlotte hike. Okay, it's on like Donkey Kong. They have not canceled it. I will be there. Uh, Nick, our coordinator from Memphis, he's going, and a whole bunch of other people. So if, if you're in the Charlotte area and you're a veteran, get out there. Go to www.riverwarriors.com. Sign up for the hike. Get a shirt. They're really cool looking. Oh, that is cool. That's right around the corner. I'm so excited. And September 12th, just FYI, I'm coming in. <laughs> I got and that, uh, that's the River Warrior uh, National Hike, and that is Zach Jenkins, who is also the owner of Semper Sliders. So I'm going to plug Semper Sliders, too, at the same time. Um, but <laughs> definitely go to Nashville. Go to all the hikes in Tennessee, Memphis, uh, Nashville, Chattanooga, Knoxville. I mean, go to uh, – but if, if, if you're not in Tennessee, we've got 55 other hikes around the country. And the new schedule is up. I mean, we've had to shift some stuff. And Russell Oxley did all that work of, of shuffling um, the hikes, but we are all we should all be good. Good, just go check out the website and sign up for a hike. Get out there and show us right. your leg. And still do something. pick something, do something. That is the theme. That is the end. And families, we need you to be involved. Not turn your eye because you don't know what to do. Because now I just. This just gave you a reason. Just walk into the VFW, and if they suck, go to another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's pretty good advice. <laughs> there's one, there's always a shoe that fits you, but thank you, guys. You are amazing, and I'll be talking to both of you at another date. And everybody, thank you for interacting and watching. And um, till next time. Thank you, Danny. Hoorah. Semper you Gummy. So welcome. And I get it. I'm remembering this time. <laughs>